Hey, Nurses on Fire, I have a special treat for you today. We have Nicole and Nadia of The Wealth Twins joining us, and they are going to show us how to get our money all the way right, especially during this economic downturn that we have. I am honored to have you ladies join us. Well, thank you. We're honored to be here. Yes, we're honored to be here, Nasima. Thank you very much. And we just want to let the nurses know right now we appreciate the work that you're doing out there and helping this country stay on its feet during this pandemic. So we really appreciate you guys. Nadia and I are both in New York, and we definitely see you guys on the front line doing all you can, and we're doing all we can by staying in the house. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stay home. <laughs> I'm a homebody, and I really like, I, I like this time. I feel like I'm using this time to, you know, really love on my family and connect, even though I still have to go to work, you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I still have to go to work, but it's still like it, like the focus on being at home has really brought us closer together. So I am looking at this time as an opportunity as we, we will talk about how you can do that as well, especially when it comes to your money. But um, can you guys share a little bit about your background? How did you become the Wealth Twins? Well, Nicole and I, we grew up in a housing development, New York housing development when we were growing up, and we had always told ourselves it has to be a different way of life here because there was such a struggle with money. So the main thing we were was using our education as a means to get ourselves out of that environment, and at the same time, we became very big savers. My mother used to give us $3 a day to go to school, and we used, we used to put $1 away every day. That turned into us being big savers when we grew up, and we started teaching people around us how to do the same thing. Yeah, so now with that, our mother, which Nadia mentioned, she worked seven days a week and she had no time off. We didn't get any holidays with her. She was a single mom. And I knew and Nadia knew that was something we did not want to do. Our mother actually worked herself, I would say, uh, to death. She passed away when we were quite young. Not that young. We were 20, but you know, we were young enough that we still needed our mother. But we both knew from then money had played a big issue in terms of just the amount of stress that she was enduring. And if we can focus on money, it would be a way for us to try to, you know, have a different lifestyle where we weren't as stressed or, you know, having to work that many hours and that many days. Wow. Dang. That's pretty big to save a third of your income <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> Like, and so I love that it came out of like just that drive to not be in the projects anymore and uh, wanting something better. So from saving um, that dollar a day, where are you guys now financially and how do you help others with their finances? Nadia and I, uh, Nadia likes to tell people I'm not really that comfortable, but Nadia and I are both millionaires, okay? And that's a combination of investing, saving, and also real estate that we hold. And we both have done it separately. So it's something that we have decided, okay, this is something we've done together. We can teach other people. And the way we do that is that we try to break down the financial markets in a simple way and also teach people personal finance in a simple way. Now our background, which we didn't mention before, Nine and I both went to Columbia University. We both worked at Goldman Sachs. I have an MBA in financial instruments, which Nina likes to say the stock market. And then from there, we just kept using education and our ability to save and understand things and make it simple for people and for us to keep making more money and making the money work for us. Yeah, that's awesome. And we want to do that for others because yes. one thing we said, we would pay it for it because we lost our mother because of that from working so hard. We said we would pay it for it and teach other people so that they wouldn't have to work so hard and understand how money can help them change their life. Yeah, and one of the things we like to impress upon people, it's not the amount of money you make, it's about the money you keep and how, what you do with that money. Whether you're invested in yourself, in your future, in your retirement, it's all about that. It's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. 
what do you tell people that think that, oh, like, that sounds good. Like, oh, they're millionaires. They're coming from a place of privilege. Like, they can't really tell me anything. Like, I don't think it's possible for me to be a millionaire. Let's take a step back. When we were on Wall Street, we weren't making millionaire money, okay? <laughs> That's not for everyone, right? So when I was making, say, when I first started working, I initially was making about 40000 right? So I wasn't making much, but the thing was is that because we grew up in, I won't say poverty, because we grew up at a point in our lives that we didn't like, we didn't need anything fancy, right? So we knew that money could be used as a tool and not use it to buy more materialistic things. We were raised to know, okay, this is what you can do with your money, and this is what's important in your life, right? So that instilled in us a frugality, that carried over into our adulthood. So instead of moving into the city and get an apartment in Manhattan, like a lot of our classmates did, we decided to move into Queens, which was much more manageable financially, and you have more space, and it just worked out for us better, right? So that allowed us to save more of our income, even with friends or when we were making more money, that money went into going into our savings and having us plan for our future. So at one point, I was saving 75% of my paycheck, you know? No matter when my income went up, that was like, oh, I got a raise, okay, that's just more money for me to save. I didn't have to change my lifestyle because I was really focused on not seeing that lifestyle creep. I knew this is what, I'd rather suffer now while I'm young than suffer when I'm older. Now, Nadia likes to focus on the saving part. There's another way that we were able to get money up. I like to focus on chasing a check. I never stayed at a job that I didn't like, and I always try to get a job that was paying me more. You know, I was never, I mean, we started working right around September 11th, you know, in New York City. We were down there at that time. And yeah, so the first thing I noticed, I saw people who had 30 years on a job lose their job the next day. And from then on, I said, I will not work anywhere for 30 years and make it feel like I'm at home and get sent home that day because I was so devoted to that company when the company's not gonna be devoted to me. I was only, and I told Nadia, we need to be devoted to the check. So I and her made it our business to always keep learning, either from people or finding ways that we were gonna learn what it took to get to the next level. Had it been getting our Series 7 and 63 to go sit with the traders and start trading. Had it be to go get our MBA. Whatever it was to go get to that next step to get more money, we were willing to do it. So we had both sides covered. We were saving and we were chasing a check to make more money. And then figuring out from people that we talked to who were in our circle of finding new circles to see what to do with the money. Because we didn't have those people around us when we were growing up. We knew people who knew how to spend money. We didn't know anyone who knew how to invest money. So that's a combination that we did. So anybody can do those things. I believe anyone can do it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So there's two important things that I want to highlight that you just said, Nicole, is um, the first thing is you guys started from when the market was crazy, like literally, you know, during September 11th, right on Wall Street, like you, like the world was falling in on you. You were seeing a lot of people losing their jobs. Um, this is kind of the situation that we're in right now where people overnight that had these secure jobs uh, suddenly didn't have anything or their whole world has changed. And so they're going into a panic about their finances and they're just not prepared and they can't see the other side and seeing like the opportunity. And I was told, um, I was given a webinar the other day and I was told um, when I said, hey, you know, you just lost your job. Look at look at the opportunity in that. I was told that I was making a privileged statement and (laughs) I was like, you know what? You know what? I am making a privileged statement because I see things a lot differently because of the things that I have experienced and the people that I know. And so, yes, I do have a lot of privilege and that's not a negative thing. Um, but I really want people to take away from that, that despite it being a challenging time, we have to come out of this ahead. We have to come out of this 
taking advantage of the things that we have the readily readily accessible for us in order to succeed and then the other thing that i want um, you to you guys to talk about a little bit more or just wanted to emphasize is that um nobody around you guys when you were growing up were doing these things you ha you didn't have that that dad that rich daddy at a corporation or somebody showing you how to make money or somebody plugging you into something so that you had opportunities to learn how to invest and all this kind of stuff i love what you said about how you had to change your circle of influence in order to know mm -hmm. how to do that so those are like two main points that i really wanted to emphasize because anybody can do those things anybody can start over anybody can change their circle of influence i mean this is that circle of influence i would say was from when we were very young i was in a school we we grew up in the projects but i went to school in a different part of queens and we went to school a different part of queens and we were tested and decided we were smart enough to get into the higher track classes in those classes it was no discussion. You were going to high school, you were going to college. Whereas if you were in another school or another class, it was like, well, maybe one out of 10 of you might be going to college. So having that around us, seeing people who, oh yeah, college is a definite. It was like, yeah, we're gonna go to college. Now it's just a matter of which one we're gonna pick, you know? So having that circle of influence from a very young age, I knew I need to get around different people. I always need to be around people who are trying to say, Oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah, just do it. I don't want to be around anyone that's not doing anything. And I think from a very young age, we were able to see that. Yeah, and I think one of the things that helped us start um, moving from saving to adding investing to that was Nicole had a conversation with, I guess, a junior manager or manager that was um, on her desk. And she said, Nicole, we were probably like, what, 21, 22? And he's like, are you investing in your retirement account? And we're like, no. He's like, let me show you compounding interest, what compound interest is. And he showed her a quick spreadsheet. And I remember her getting on the phone and calling me. And she said, Nadia, we're getting into our 401ks right now. Based on the numbers that my boss has showed me, it makes no sense for us not to be in. You know? From that point on, we started investing in our 401k. Once you start doing that, then you start saying, hey, how can I maximize this? How can I make this more efficient? So we started reading, you start speaking to other people, finding out what they're doing. So this matter of constantly learning and trying to improve it, even if it's just a little bit every year to try to do it, it's even, it will work for you, right? And when we were in, yeah, when we were in the investment bank, our hands are tied a lot in the, what you can't actually invest in, you know? So when we actually left that environment, it was like, oh, now it's even better because we don't have those restrictions upon us anymore. Yeah, and, and like you were saying, Asima, the whole thing about people thought you were making a privileged statement. Listen, think of it as a reset, and you want that reset earlier than later. And the earlier you get that lesson, and the earlier, the earlier you get to learn from it. And now if you don't learn from it, and it happens to you again, now there's a problem. But it's not a privileged statement if it happened early enough in your life that you can reset and say, I don't want this to happen again to me. What can I do? All these things are lessons. But some people don't want to see it right now. So <laughs> I mean, it's hard. It's a hard thing to hear. You just lost your job, and somebody says that. Like I understand that, but at the same time, like so, what? What's next? And where? And where are you going to be next year if you don't make any changes? Where are you going to be ten years from now if you don't make any changes? And so you know, take a moment. You know, okay. You can talk for a little while, but then like next steps, what's next? Well, if you look from 2000 to 2020, we've had at least three or four of these crises that are similar, right? We had the dot-com bust, we had September 11th, we had the recession in 2007, 2008, and now you have the pandemic now. It's not a question of if it's never going to happen, it's just when it's going to happen, you know? So you got to, like, my thing is I always like to prepare myself because I don't like surprises. I'm not that person. So I'd rather just make sure I'm secure because I don't want to endanger myself or my family if things do change on me like that, you know? Right. So what can people do right now to protect themselves for any other 
um, market downturns? What can they take advantage of during this recession or downturn or whatever crisis that we're, we're experiencing right now so that when, when it happens, because it's going to happen again, they don't end up at the bottom? Okay. I would say two things. One, they should realize not to become emotional. That they can see history repeats itself. Okay, one, we go through these cycles a lot. Two, it seems that the stock market has gone up and always goes up. And we know that the stock market, we do know there's a constant that the stock market fluctuates. So one, learn not to be emotional. Take the time out to just sit back, relax, and just not be emotional. Two, I would say, before anybody starts trading in any environment, even if you say now or later, or if you're already in it, you need to know about asset allocation. People like to pick stocks, people like to talk about securities, but they've shown in studies, the most important thing you can do is understand asset allocation. Now, what do I mean by that? There are four main things. You have cash, bonds, stocks, and sometimes REITs, right? These are the four main securities, uh, more asset classes, four asset classes. The way you choose how much stocks you're gonna have in the portfolio, how many bonds or what percentage of bonds you're gonna have and what percentage of cash you're gonna have has more influence on your outcome in terms of your money in the long run than picking stocks. So know the power of asset allocation first. And then also, Know the difference between trading and investing. If you are investing and you are a passive or not trying to be a person that's trying to beat the market, which is trading mainly, then you do not have to stress out. It's a long-term gain based on your asset allocation and your diversification. You should be all right. So I would say those two things. Understand asset allocation. Understand the difference between trading and investing. And I'll just add a third one. Right now, from my point of view, cash is king, right? I think that we're going to see a lot of fluctuations in the market. Maybe some people can take it, some people can't. But you need to have your emergency savings at least nine months, right? And if you have that and you have extra money, then you can start investing, right? And we don't want you to start investing any money that you're scared to lose, okay? But also, if you have enough cash on hand, and if we do roll into a recession, that's your opportunity to use that money to bring yourself up in that time because that's time for opportunity. Like you can get in on the bottom floor and have your money grow as the market goes back up. And I'm talking about the stock market or the real estate market, you know? And when it comes to the stock market, Nani and I both agree. We don't say jump in with both feet. We don't say try to time this market. If you want to take advantage of this market, you can do dollar cost averaging, or you can set a little bit of money aside and just buy securities week to week basis, month to month basis after you have done your research. But there's nobody telling you, or we're not telling you, hey, you got 10,000 laying there? Go put 10,000 in here because tomorrow it could turn into 5,000, okay? But if you think that this is an opportunity, you're not gonna miss the up. If you're focusing on the market now, it's not gonna turn in one day and go back up to amazing. You're not going to miss it up. And I think most people think, I'm going to miss it, I'm going to miss it. And they get so crazy, and they are willing to just rush into the market. Take your time. Get into the market so that you don't, you don't want to be out of this market. Because you got to understand for yourself, what would be worse, me not getting into this market and missing this opportunity, or me saying I missed uh, the bottom of this market? So if you're willing to say, I want to get in this market, and I don't care, I'm not at the bottom or not, then you need to do dollar cost averaging and keep getting in this market on a strategic basis. Yeah, it's more of a long-term point of view because if you go into the mindset of investing because you just want to make money quicker, you're making yourself right to scam. And people are going to prey upon that and you're going to lose a lot more money that way. Yes, yes. We'll talk about some of the predatory ways people um, are going to try to take advantage of you, especially right now. Um, but let's talk about like people as investors. So most people and, and especially like in this in people, my audience are nurses and they, they might not think about themselves as investors. 
But if you guys have a retirement fund at your job, you guys are investors right now. Um, and then, so I just want people to understand that you're already investing, like you're already an investor, but now we want to turn you into more responsible investors. One of the things that I've seen um, is people um, thinking that because the market is so bad, they want to turn to conservative investments right now. They want to take all their money in their retirement funds and move them over to more conservative investments because they're scared to lose money. What do you say to those people? Okay. So I would say, where are you in terms of your career? Are you two years away from retiring? If not, then why are you being conservative? You're going to lose more in the long run if you didn't focus on Okay, this is a 10 year, 20 year plan. The market is going to fluctuate, like I said, but it eventually goes up. And if you go into conservative, then you're going to miss the ride when it comes to the stocks rising. And then don't pull your money out. You're basing it on emotions. If you want to do anything, the first thing you can do as an investor is look at your fees that you're paying in your retirement account. That's the number one thing that people don't pay attention to, good times or bad. Those fees hurt you more than a lot of other things. So if you're going to be, even if you just start investing and start looking at your retirement account, the first thing you need to look at before you start thinking about pulling anything out is to look at your fees. Yeah, and my thing is also, you got to look at the reason why you're investing, right? Is it for a long-term plan? Is it for retirement? If it is, don't look at what's going on right now. A lot of people can't stomach what's going on. I don't even look at my accounts right now. I just make sure my allocation is the way I want it to be right now. And then I don't look at it because it gives you that, that urge to want to just get out of it, pull your mind. That's just a natural instinct, you know? Don't do that to yourself. Don't stress yourself out and say, look, this is my course. I'm going to stick to it. I, everything will go up and down, up and down, but I'm going to stay the course right now. Yeah, and if you're conservative by nature, then you're conservative. But don't do it out of fear. Because you're going to miss out on what Nadia said before about the compounding. And we want to do as much compounding and get as much as we can on that compounding as, as long as we can. So if you've got 20 years in the game or you've got 15 years, you want to focus on compounding more than being conservative. And your 401k is not going to have anything crazy in it to begin with. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. But but I have seen 401ks where they drop you into a target day fund that has high expenses, um, higher expenses than you should be paying and that doesn't really perform as well. And so um, what are some ways that people can say like they're like, this is all so confusing to me. Um, how can people see? Um, well, let's let's go all the way back. How can people like start learning about investing like what are some things that they can do and then how can they see like how do I know like if I'm paying high fees okay so one we like to start out that we are not financial advisors we are just talking about what we've done in the past and what has worked for us so with anything you can always lose money investing and if you want uh, more you should always get more advice whenever you can but we are not financial investors, so I just want to make that clear. Now, when it comes to how do you know how much fees you're, you're paying, one, you get a statement on at least every quarter or so from your 401k. Now, most people don't look at it. They just look at the top number. Did it go up or did it go down this quarter, right? But in the fine print, you're going to look at something called basis points, okay? And if you can't find it, you can call up your uh, your 401k uh, fiduciary would call it, right? The people that actually, the custodians that hold the 401k account. They're going to tell you, this is how many basis points you're paying, okay? And it doesn't matter if you don't know what a basis point is, it's one one hundredth of a percent. But all you know and all you need to know, the higher the number, the more you're paying. So they said 75 basis point, you're paying a lot, okay? So it doesn't matter if you don't know what basis point is, you want the number to be as close to zero as possible, okay? So you can look at it on your statements or you can give them a call, okay? Now, when it comes to learning about investing, Nadia and I have made it our mission to teach people to, that investing does not have to be with complicated terms. It doesn't have to be something that you need to stay away from because you don't have the time 
or you think is too challenging, right? We have simple tools that you can use on our site. We have the um, 25 terms. We want you to get first uh, acclimated with the terminology. When someone says the stock market, what do they mean? You can do that by a dictionary if you want. Think about, you can also look in the newspaper. You can start watching TV just to acclimate yourself with the terms. Don't watch the TV in terms of when they're telling the market's going up, the market's going down. That's meant as TV at the end of the day and it's meant for ratings. We don't want you to look at it for that. We just want you to look at it for the terms. After that, books are a great way, okay? And then from there, you have Nasima, you have Nadia and Nicole, you have a whole bunch of us that are out here showing you from my personal experience how it is and what you can do as an individual to learn. And we're making it very simple for you to do it. Yeah, I think that that's all great. What are some things that people should avoid when they're worried about, I mean, when they start investing? Like, I'm worried about um, people getting taken advantage of because they're seeing all these new investors. What are some things people should look out for? Oh, the one thing you should avoid is anybody guaranteeing you a rate of return, okay? One of the things going around is like, oh, I got a guarantee of a 10% return. Like, nobody can guarantee your return, okay? So as soon as you hear that, that should be a red flag to you, that this may not be on the up and up, okay? And if the person who's telling you this can't explain to you more than just using buzz, buzzwords when they're explaining to you what they want you to put their, your money into, that's another red flag, okay? Yeah, I would also say, if you're a beginner, you should not go into complicated investments. I don't think you should get involved in options trading. I don't think you should get involved in Forex trading, global trading. I'm not saying you can't later on down the line, but you want to learn how to crawl before you run a marathon, all right? And there's simple investments that you can do with just stock and bonds. They might not be sexy, but they're timeless. And I and I are all about timeless investments. This is how people become rich. We talk about how to become wealthy. If you want to have a get-rich-quick scheme or a get-rich-quick, it's an easy way to lose your money quickly, all right? So you wanna look for timeless investments. And then if, once you have, expert, um, have become an expert on that, then move on to Forex, global trading, you know, options trading. Those things are out there, but get the basics down first. Have the foundation first and then move on. Do you guys have any favorite books or resources that teach outside of you guys' website? Because I know you guys have some amazing, you guys have amazing resources, videos, content, just all across the board as far as investing. So make sure you guys are checking out Wealth Twin. It's not the, it's <laughs> wealthtwins.com and all of their content there um, for great, great resources. But what, um, what books or resources outside of your stuff do you guys recommend? Um, I'll put one that's a good one that's um, good for beginners. It's Rule 1 Investing. And there's another one called Armchair Investing, Armchair Millionaire. That's actually a one for pre people who don't want, it's an older book, but it's one for people who don't want to be stressed out about looking at the market every single day. It's more of a set it and forget it approach. And another one is a, a Tony Robbins book. It's called Money Master the Game. And he goes into a lot of detail and it's geared towards beginners. It's very, it's a very thick book, but if you take the time out and read it, I think it's a very good guide on what you should do. I would say uh, for me, there will be three books that I actually really like. One, which is a, a very easy book to read. It would be The Boggleheads Guide to Investing. Okay, that will be one. Uh, a Random Walk down wall street would be another one and then three which is a little bit more dense and it's pretty hard to read because it's about 600 pages so if you have if you're in quarantine like the rest of us great time to read it would be the intelligent investor by ben graham this book has been rewritten at least six times and it he is he's proven to be true over and over again and if you don't want to get through the whole book, they have versions where they have commentary at every chapter where they break down that chapter, the previous chapter. 
So even if you just read the commentaries, it is a, actually is a good book. And I think it would definitely give you some, a good head start on how to invest. Love it. Love it. Those are all great resources. And let's talk about what you guys actually do on your website, like what resources and support you guys provide specifically um, through your platform. <laughs> well, one, we, um, we give a lot of free information out. So Nicole and I have created a lot of um, content around educating people around investing because we know a lot of times the terminology is very intimidating and people feel like they're, they should be invested and they feel a little ashamed that they're not, that they don't want to ask those questions and the very basic questions. So we put it out there on our site. Um, we also have a free course that's a five day free investment course just for getting people up in this like start to beginning invest to the point where you, we break down what a broker is, how to book your first trade, where you should probably think about booking your first trade, you know? Because a lot of people don't even know where to even start investing. So they're looking at apps, and it's a lot easier now because a lot of apps are coming out. But it's just giving people a little more information so that if you do choose to use a financial advisor, at least you're going into the conversation with knowledge on your side rather than going into a conversation with someone who can talk circles around you if they're not doing something in your best interest. So our main goal is to try to educate people. And I think Nani and I were actually talking about this because um, we definitely appreciate what the nurses are doing. We actually have uh, a specific page just for you guys where it's called wealthtwins.com backslash nurses on fire, where we're going to have for you the free five day course, the blueprint to the vesting that we said, we're going to have the 25 terms, must know terms in investing. And we're also going to give you, the 25 most asked questions around investing. And all you have to do is wealthtwins.com backslash nurses on fire. And that's just because we love Nasima and we love nurses. Aw, you guys are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And I know people will definitely benefit from having access to that. So thank you again. Um, but I did want to talk about nurses in general, especially like right now, what are some things nurses should take in con into consideration considering we are on the front lines. A lot of us are risking our lives during this time. And then we're also stressed about what's going on in the markets. Okay. Well, let me, um, like, like I was saying earlier, I had a, saw a news article that a lot of nurses at this time have the ability to make a lot of overtime. If you are that nurse, one thing you can do is make sure that if you don't have your emergency savings fund at the level that you need it to be, use this time now to put that money in, right? That extra money that's coming in because you're working even extra hours. Two, because you guys are on the front line, I would suggest that maybe you should have some kind of state planning in order to. I know it's a little morbid to think about, but this time right now is something that it should be on the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Like, do I have everything in place to take care of my family if I cannot provide for them going forward, you know? And another thing is, if you are a nurse and you are investing in your 401k, worry about your, what you're doing on your job right now. Don't worry about what's going on in your investment account. That's something that you should not be focusing on right now unless you're closer to retirement, okay? And I would say, you know, nurses – your job is to take care of others and you guys are so good at taking care of others, but do you actually concentrate on taking care of yourself and just taking a few minutes on those days off that you can stop thinking about, you know, being a nurse, think about how you can manage your finances because that's another way to provide self care for you. That's why I say to people, managing your finances is a form of self care. You get that right, you stop stressing about a lot of different areas of your life. It makes your relationships with others better. It makes your, your stress go down just because of money. It will help you live in a better uh, neighborhood. It will help you uh, take better vacations just by focusing on your money. So if you wanna have some self-care, focus on your finances. But like Nadia said, when it comes to this market, just relax, you have other things and what we're telling you when in terms of those books that we gave you about index investing, those type of styles that we're suggesting, index investing, ETF investing, those are low maintenance investing styles. 
We don't want you to sit in front of the screen and watch your investments. We want to teach you how to invest where you can set it and forget it. Go back every once in a while and rebalance it. And I think that's something nurses can definitely use. Learn how to set it, forget it, and then rebalance it when necessary. Yeah, I love it. I love it all. And it's like a quote from one of a, a book that I just recently read that was really good too, was called uh, The Quit Like a Millionaire by Christy Shin. Um, and she says that if you understand money, life is really easy. But if you don't understand money, life is hard. And so I want life to be easy for everyone. And, you know, money is definitely a tool. And I think um, a lot of times we're taught to think that people with money or people that are wealthy are privileged or greedy and all these things that we want to put a negative connotation around, but it's all, it's only just limiting you and your abilities. And so know that, you know, you deserve wealth and that wealth is something that is attainable for each and every one of you guys. Um, and, and make sure you have these tools in place for not only you, um, put like know these tools for not only you but for your family and so I love what you said Nadia about yeah get your savings up right now and plan for the unexpected make sure you have a plan in place if this didn't show you and, and shake you and I think things like this have to happen every once in a while so we can kind of get shaken out of our comfort zone and know like yeah life isn't guaranteed but you can put things in place right now to protect your family and this is a perfect time to do it so yeah, I think I think another thing is people think of money as like think of money as a tool to give you choices with your life. Okay, maybe you don't want to have to work every single day for the next thirty years. Make that a choice. Use the income you have to give yourself a better choice where to live, a better choice of schooling for your family, a better choice of your the opportunities you'll take going forward. It's a tool. Don't look at it as evil. It's something that is meant to help you move forward. It can also keep you down if you focus on it in a negative way. Yeah. Yep. I think every, uh, yeah, I think uh, like if you ask, you know, most people what they really want out of life, like every answer you're going to get is going to boil down to freedom to choice and all those kind of things and making sure that you have your money right is going to buy you that freedom. Okay, I just wanted to add one thing to Seema. When it comes to freedom, I want people to understand you don't have to be a millionaire to feel that freedom. Yes. People think it's unachievable to become a millionaire. You don't even have to be a millionaire. As long as you have enough money put aside that give yourself some freedom, you have it. So you just have to decide what that number is, but it doesn't have to be a million dollars. I was free at 23 when I was able to tell my first job, I'm not doing this anymore. And I walked out the door because I had my money straight, but I wasn't a millionaire at that time. So I just want to put that out there. If you put it in this perspective, if you have $10 and no debt, you're already beating more than 50% of the population. Okay. So don't beat yourself up. <laughs> Yes. And I love it. I love it because there's levels, there's levels of freedom, but the most of the first step is to get to a place of financial security. And then you have the option to say deuces to a job or a relationship or a situation that's not serving you. And that is freedom. Yes. You don't have to be a millionaire. Thank you, Nicole, for that. Yes. That's, that's awesome. So yeah. So your real estate, how'd you guys get into real estate? Oh boy, I'll let Nadia take this one. <laughs> Well, put it this way, I, I had always wanted to buy real estate, but I live in New York, right? So at one point, it was just getting ridiculous. It's still at that point now. It's been up and down. But I made a point that said, I will buy something because most of the people in my family had never owned anything, you know? So I went into saving, like I said, 75% of my paycheck, and I just put everything away. And I stayed in the same apartment for 14 years. I said, if I move here, I'm moving into something I own, right? So what that allowed me to do, you know, they say luck is oppor um, opportunity plus preparation. Me putting that money away, and when the opportunity, when the market went down in the real estate market in New York, I was prepared to jump on that. So I guess I was lucky at that point, you know? So I was able to buy a multifamily in, um, in Brooklyn, New York, where I have a commercial storefront on the bottom. Wow. So I have three apartments plus a commercial storefront 
And that allows me to leave, live mortgage free. And plus I run a business in the storefront. Right now we're closed because of what's going on. But that's a way that I wanted to secure a future for my family and for my children, you know. I wanted to buy something in New York, so I put away as much as I could in order to do that, and then I looked for opportunities. We also bought smart. We did not go for predatory loans. We made sure we knew what we were doing beforehand before we put our money down. And Nadia specifically went for a cash flow generating property because we thought ahead, because we had gone through those crises before, you know, what happens if we lose our jobs? Yep, we're working on Wall Street, Working on Wall Street, you learn that, I don't know, you either learn or you'll find out quickly that your job is not permanent, especially in times like this. So I was working on Wall Street when I started when I was very young, and I saw people like really nervous about their mortgage payments and about their high bills, and I said, I don't want that to be me. So I made sure when I bought this building, it will be a I will be able to pay it with one income and not depend on the tenant rents to pay for my property. And if they did pay for it, that's even better because that allows me to save the money I had coming in, you know? So that's the mindset I went in when I purchased my property. That's dope. So did you guys both buy the, the property together or you do your real estate? Oh, it's all separate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I live out in the suburbs. I had already had a family when I was deciding to buy a place, but I knew I was looking for a two family. Same reason. My job was never secure. I, and I tell people the job is the riskiest thing you can have because you don't control when they get, they're going to let you go whenever they want to, you know? So it was my job to find things that I can help, you know, uh, what I could control. So I said, look, I was used to living in a building. Well, then I can do a two family house. I have people helping me pay the mortgage and then it took some stress off of us. And I do have some property outside the country, uh, but those are just long-term investment properties that hopefully will pay off later. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Cause a lot of people, um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunities also during oh, this time to, yeah, oh, yeah, to get into real estate right now. And so, um, that's another thing to be ready for, um, cash wise, like, um, that's what I say. cash is king. If you have the cash on you and you have your credit, right. The bank will give you that money because eventually they're gonna, the credit's going to seize up, you know? Mm -hmm. They're going to be more stringent about who can borrow money. So if you put yourself in a good position now, you can really capitalize on the opportunities that are going to come out of this time. You know? I'm not trying to sound like, like, you know, we're happy about it. It's just more of like, here's an opportunity. It's a dark time right now, but you have to look at the silver lining sometimes and look at this way to help move yourself forward. Yeah, this is a time to generate wealth. This is a time that those where it was too expensive to get into these areas that are wealth creating opportunities. Now is the time. Six months from now is going to be the time. So get your money and your credit right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys. So I just want to wrap up by you guys sharing how people can get in contact with you. Um, again, reiterate, you'll have resources over at wealthwin.com slash nurses on fire. Um, and uh, what else? What else do you have for the people? We have a YouTube channel. Yay. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see that Nicole is better looking than Nadia if you go on. Oh, okay. <laughs> You go on, if you go on YouTube, type in Well Twins, you're going to see us, you know, Nadia and I. Yeah, the, uh, if you want to look at directly, it's uh, youtube.com slash Wealth Twins. And we have, uh, we just started the channel in January. We have a couple of, um, couple of videos up. We're getting better every day. And now we're going to start pushing more um, beginner videos for people to start investing. Because we know a lot of people want to take this time now to start this and they're hungry for information and we just want to be able to put those in bite-sized pieces and take out the jargon and make it understandable for the average person yeah so our videos are pretty light in terms of um, terminology we break down everything that we say and we make it uh, interesting and educational at the same time i would say and we're just trying to find different ways. Thank you. We're trying to find different ways to reach the people. That's all. We want to pay it for. I love it. I love it. And um, 
I just want to again reiterate the fact that yes, these are challenging times, but you know, we do have to look at the silver lining. We do have to look at what we what opportunities we can take advantage of right now so that we come out of this ahead and we can help other people and bring other people up with us in the process. And if Nadia and Nicole can do it coming out of the New York projects to millionaires, so can we. And again, you don't have to be a millionaire. You just have to be able to unlock some level of freedom in your life. And so that's what this is all about. So thank you so much, Nadia and Nicole. This is so fun. My first first twin interview. Well, feel free so that we, that means you get good luck. You know that, right? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. As long as I don't have twins, I'll be. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy I didn't have twins either, okay? Because I my mother nuts. <laughs> But twins are definitely a blessing. And yes, I am honored to have you guys. So thank you again. All right. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. All right.